Welcome everyone, I'm Roger and uh, I'm here with uh, Pat Hoyt at the 2000, May 2023 Rudder Workshop. And uh, we've got a, you know, it's a special day for lots of reasons. Uh, rudder Workshop for, for one thing, but uh, I'm here with uh, Pat Hoyt and uh, he came to the Rudder Workshop 17 years ago to build his 601 XL rudder. And he's been flying that for the last 17 years on the building process and then flying. And so he decided he wanted to build another project. Mexico traffic, Spirit 750 Zulu Whiskey is going to be back taxiing for 18 Mexico. And uh, we're getting ready to go for a demo flight for the 750 Cruiser. And he's here at the Rudder Workshop building the Cruiser, and then he's also taking home the Cruiser kit. So how's everything going so far at the Rudder Workshop? Oh, we're having a wonderful time. Uh, we've got, uh, we've made really good progress on the on the rudder. Uh, it, it blows me away the difference uh, uh, today versus 17 years ago. Uh, I recall drilling a lot of holes, drawing a lot of lines, uh, fitting a lot of pieces 17 years ago. Now, with your CNC uh, production, your your bending, your drilling. It's amazing how everything is lining right up. You know, yeah. the, the pieces, they either fit together or you're doing something wrong. Right. Well, we'll, we'll do a run up here and then we'll get uh, more details on the, the difference between the kits then and now. And uh, we, right now we're going to do a run up. we got the 750 Cruiser, like I mentioned earlier, with the UL Power 350i 118 horse. Um, I believe on your 601 you've got the, the Viking engine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're really enjoying that, and you're going to probably put the Viking on your 750 Cruiser also, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, and I'm leaning in that direction. All right, well, we're going to do a run up here, run it up to, you know, 16, 1700 RPM, check each edition. Got plenty of fuel, just uh, got fuel, controls clear and free. That's my fuel selector. Laps up and down. And we'll check our, we've got a little weather out there, so we're going to, with our ADSB, we're going to check the weather a little bit out there. It's fine. I'm just letting everything warm up. we got the, the Dynon system here. I uh, really enjoy uh, installation and flying behind the Dynon. It works well. It's beautiful. There's a lot yeah. of information right there. Yeah, there is. Uh, lots, of, lots of information. Bang for the buck, it's probably, you know, the best, I think, compared to putting in steam. Yeah, you know something else that kind of strikes me. I'm six foot three tall. Hey, look at you. And, yeah. and I can clearly look underneath the wing. Uh, you know, I've got plenty of headroom. I'm, I'm not turning my head and looking out at a wing root. You know, sitting here on the ground looking, you know, looking for traffic. I can see right. up through the roof. You know, I can see under the wing. Uh, visibility is. Well, you're not even in the air yet, you're already saying that. Wait till we get up in the air. And uh, one of the nicest things I like about the cruiser, and I'll show you when we're up in the air, is in level flight. Uh, you got a lot of forward visibility, whereas almost every aircraft out there, uh, the forward visibility is very limited because you either level with the horizon to the, and you get the good thing at the cowling, and then you can't see over the nose. Well, this is actually nose down. All right, well, let's go check traffic. Mexico traffic, Spermo 750 Zulu Whiskey is going to be departing runway 18. We'll be a local flight to Mexico. And what I like to do, Pat, is I like to start with the stick quite a ways back, like almost like a soft field takeoff. Those, those will come up. And then she'll fly right on off. See, the nose came up right instantly. And just ease in the power of the rest away. Oh, it's smooth and effortless. And we got a little little shower south of us, so we're, <laughs> we're going to maintain probably to the north. And we're just going to do a normal short demo flight. Well, I can see some showers off in the distance. And yeah. Visibility downward is outstanding. Yeah, yeah, check out the visibility, you know, and go into a turn right here. You can see right over the wing. And that was one of Chris's, uh, you know, when he was developing the, the 701 uh, back in, uh, in the 80s, he wanted to be able to see when you're in a turn. He didn't want it to be like a Cessna.
it's really a, a nice change for me. Uh, I'm fortunate in that I have a, my 601 that I built, and I also own a Grumman Tiger. Both are low-wing aircraft. Right. And flying in a high wing, I really uh, can appreciate the visibility of the ground. That's right. really the, the mission of the 750 that I'm building is, you know, pleasant ground observation with a friend. Right, so exactly. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. We got it. Yep, exactly. Well, I know we well, let's get back to the rudder workshop. Uh, you, you built your, uh, you came to the rudder workshop 17 years ago to build 601XL, and uh, now you're here at the workshop uh, 2023 building the cruiser rudder. Now, I know the rudder today is a little bit more difficult and harder than the rudder before, right? Is that correct <laughs> or not? Oh, it's a piece of cake. Piece of cake, yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, it's fascinating to have seen the evolution of your processes over the last 17 years. You know, from my perspective uh, as a participant, I mean, I've, I've built one of your airplanes before. You know, I, I know the work that, that's involved in that. And, uh, you know, I've been studying, I went back and I studied my 601 drawings as well as the 750 drawings, just comparing them side by side. Right. And the, the evolution is incredible. You know, the, the 750 didn't exist when I built my 601. Correct. Uh, if it would have, I probably would have went with the 750. But, you know, it, it's it's more airplane, it's more modern, uh, very smooth. You know, as, as you're flying in here, I notice you're able to take your hand off the stick. It's positively Correct. stable. Now, let's show that. Uh, let's get it trimmed up, uh, level flight, hands off. Uh, very, you push the stick forward, pull it back. It's very natural, it's stabil uh, natural stability, yeah. neutral stability. Yeah. Now let's do a turn here, and I'll show you a nice uh, standard rate turn here. See right over the skylight there. It's very easy to climb in this aircraft. You, know, you get so much visibility. Yeah, I've got a perfect visibility all the way off to the horizon over top of that left wing. Yeah. And we'll roll out. And we'll roll back, but the other way. Well, and today is another special day uh, for several other reasons. Uh, I, I hear that uh, you just retired, so this is your next adventure. I don't know if Mary, your wife, is going to be ready for you to be home, uh, you know, 360 days a year. Uh, so uh, that's a very congratulations. Uh, that's a milestone, and uh, takes a lot of hard work to make it to that point. Yeah. And so congratulations on your retirement. Yeah, thank you. And I, I wanted a, a retirement project. And, you know, the whole idea behind the 750. You know, you'll be honest. The idea came about while sitting in a hot tub. Huh? I've been talking to my wife about. Gee, I really like that 750. You know, that'd, that'd be a fun airplane. Finally, she got tired of hearing me talking about said, well, why don't you just buy it one and build one? That's all it took right there. Right. So uh, we put the deposit down a year ago, uh, timing it around my projected retirement date, uh, as well as uh, my 60th birthday, which is today. Yeah, congratulations and on your 60th birthday, too. I, I wanted to do all that stuff, you know, kind of a, a momentous vacation. And uh, so that's what we did. That's what I wanted to do. And on this day, I wanted to come here to, to Zenith. Uh, again, I've been out here a few times, but I wanted to come out here. I wanted to do the rudder workshop again. Uh, I wanted to pick up my kit. It's been such a positive experience the first time, and I, I wanted to do it again. Excellent. Very blessed that I am able to do that. Well, I, I don't, you know, all my customers, I don't think of them as customers, I think as family. But uh, now you're the second generation, you're building another kit, you come to our homecomings every year. I don't think of as a customer, I think you and Mary as family now. Yeah, we feel the same way. You know, it's, it, it's you know, way beyond customer, yeah. you know, relationship. Yeah. Well, you know, I've known you for, you know, at least 17 years. Yeah. I've known Sebastian for at least 17 years. You know, uh, have I ever told you my uh, iceberg analogy? Okay. A aviation is like an iceberg, okay? you got this big iceberg floating in the water. You see the little bit that's above the surface. Right. Well, that's the airplanes. you got, you know, three quarters of it that's under the surface. That's the people. That's, that's the skills. That's the fun. You know, the whole social aspect. You know, right. the, the wives and girlfriends, spouses, getting those people involved as well. 
There's a whole lot more to aviation than just airplanes, and especially experimental aviation, home-built aviation, the kind of stuff we're doing right here. Right, exactly. It's, it's just wonderful. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and uh, venture back to the airport, and then uh, you can finish building your rudder. Yeah. And then we've got, uh, you know, today is the first day of the rudder workshop, so we've uh, got our uh, dinner at the Country Club, which I really enjoy. Everybody can sit back and uh, tell the airplane stories or, or what's their goals and yeah, talk aviation. So that's yeah. always fun. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear the, the stories and the history of people. You know, the, the first time that we did this 17 years ago, I had no idea if I could build an airplane, you know. I just wanted to try to build the rudder to see if I was capable. You know, I, I didn't have any experience with sheet metal. Right. I, well, I, I built like a a tray for a tackle box and <laughs> <made a> great <laughs> ones. And as I recall, it didn't turn out very well. But, you know, that was the extent of my sheet metal experience. You know, and, and I'm sure a lot of the other people who attend the rudder workshops kind of feel the same way. Sure, sure, um, exactly. So we did the rudder, and then we decided, yeah, we can do this. And then, uh, you know, we bought the tail for the 601. Uh, we finished that, and then we reevaluated. You know, hey, are we capable of this? Uh, yeah, I think we we can we can do it. And then I bought the wings. I did that. Then the fuselage. Uh, built an engine yep. back then. Yep, exactly. Well, um, boy, uh, you know, the whole package was was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot. All right, let me check the winds. We got a little bit of weather up Mexico there, so we want to make sure they haven't changed. Automated weather observation. One, four, four, three. Zulu weather. Wind two seven zero at four. Visibility one zero. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll uh, we'll change the runway two four. The winds are changing. Yeah, Mexico traffic. Thermo is going to be crossing over midfield, so left now for runway 24 Mexico. Looking good. Looks like they're getting all the rain up that way. Yeah, yeah, it'll be here in another 10 minutes or so. <laughs> hey, Mexico traffic, Spermal is going to be in on the left downward for runway 24 Mexico. There's a nice storm way out there. Oh. I love watching the weather. Oh yeah, it's yeah, been fascinating. Okay, we get the gas undercarriage mixture pop seat belts. Everything looks correct. Secure. And we're going to start slowing it down. We're going to deploy the flaps a little bit, and uh, we'll be approach speed, you know, in the 50s. There we go. There we go. We're in the flat range. Trim here, elevator trim. We're going to do a little longer approach. Uh, we just had uh, the big runway redone and brand new lights and everything, and I want to turn them on and see what they all look like. We just had it open, just the airport was open last, or just got open last week the other day. Actually, no, this week. So, uh, I've had to work a lot of crosswinds in the last uh, month and a half. Uh, last workshop I was doing 90 degree crosswinds, 20 plus knots, so it was, wow. it was working to be pretty good. But it's nice to have both runways open. All 
Ah, oh, there they, uh, yep, there they come on. All right, that works. New Mexico traffic spammer is on final for runway 24 Mexico. Looks like I can see the wind side. Looks like it's still indicating the correct direction for us. And the flaps all the way down. Now we're starting to slow up a little bit. the 50s if you want a number, 52, which is nice. Maintain that center line and bring back the power all the way, bring the nose up just a little bit. Nose off, ease the kick back. Now let the nose barely touch. Dip. Very nice, smooth solid feeling airplane. And it's not me, it's just a very easy airplane to fly. I've had a few takeoff and landings so <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I enjoyed taking you up and enjoyed you here at the workshop, so uh, it's going to be the next adventure for us, uh, building the cruiser together. Yeah, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's the right airplane at the right time for me. Great. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, a person's mission, you know, the, the aircraft has a mission and the person has a mission, and those missions can change, you know, as time passes. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. You know, an airplane that's, a, you know, right airplane for somebody in, the, you know, in their 30s, you know, maybe not the right airplane for somebody in their 60s. Correct. Yep, exactly. Mary got a ride also. Oh, that's, she did. Yes, yeah, that's that's uh, it's good to get the, the spouses involved and get them engaged. Oh, definitely, definitely get the family involved. I'm very fortunate. That's my wife being involved in aviation.